Hi, I'm Jay Lee. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Johns Hopkins, and I specialize in sports medicine. We're talking about knee injuries, and today we're going to talk about the pediatric meniscus. And I'm going to tell you five things you need to know about the meniscus. Number one, what is the meniscus? The meniscus is this fibroelastic cartilage that sits within the knee. It's between the femur or the thigh bone and the shin bone or tibia. And basically what it does is it optimizes force transmission between these two bones. It's essentially a shock absorber. It protects this articular cartilage, this white substance in this diagram, and its absence is detrimental to the knee because it oftentimes will lead to cartilage wear and arthritis. Number two, what is unique about the pediatric meniscus? And so for younger patients, you'll have to consider that a younger patient, younger than the age of 10, may have injured an abnormal meniscus. We'll call that a discoid meniscus. And you'll have to consider that younger patients also have a greater healing capacity. So we should be more proactive in salvaging an injured meniscus. In terms of older patients, these patients more commonly will injure a normal meniscus, but you still have to keep a discoid meniscus in mind. In terms of signs of a meniscus tear, most commonly the athlete will present with a contact injury or oftentimes also a non-contact and twisting injury and present with some pain in their knee. They might have some mild swelling and they might also complain of locking or clicking inside their knee. The knee oftentimes will give way. On exam, their trainer or their physician might notice some swelling again. There'll be some specific tests for the meniscus where you can go ahead and stretch and stress that cushion. And oftentimes that will cause some of the symptoms of locking and clicking and sometimes cause pain. In terms of the exam, you can oftentimes push along the meniscus, which is this blue structure on this diagram, and you'll have pain when we're pushing in the right area. The other signs of a meniscus tear are oftentimes found in imaging. Oftentimes we'll get an x-ray. X-rays are oftentimes normal for the average meniscus tear. But if you have an abnormal meniscus to start, say a discoid meniscus, oftentimes the gap between the thigh bone and the shin bone will actually be bigger. The MRI is our best test to rule out or rule in a meniscus tear. Not only will it tell us where the meniscus is torn, it will also give us the ability to overall assess the structure of the meniscus and determine whether or not your child's meniscus was normal to start or if it was abnormal, say a discoid meniscus. Number four. In terms of treatment for meniscus tear, it depends on the tear size. So small tears can oftentimes heal on their own, especially in our younger kids with a great vascular supply to their meniscus. However, larger tears, tears to these cushions will oftentimes catch still, and when they catch, that'll prevent healing, and oftentimes it'll require a surgeon to go ahead and put that back together. In terms of surgical treatment, historically we used to go ahead and just cut out the entire meniscus, not knowing its function, but now, uh, we can oftentimes save the meniscus through an arthroscopic surgery, meaning we make small incisions and we repair through these small incisions for faster healing. Number five, so the main difference for a pediatric meniscus and a pediatric meniscus tear is that we should try to repair and not remove this meniscus. Even if there's a chance that the meniscus may not heal, let's say it's 50-50, you should still go with that 50% chance that your child's meniscus may be salvaged and may be preserved for long-term function. You also have to keep in mind that discoid meniscus, which I'll talk about in a separate talk. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to take a look at your child, take a look at their knee, and get them back to sport with your help.